Well, I hope you've been enjoying this 12 Days of OTRS Central Christmas 2020 edition so far. And frankly, if you haven't, well, humbug on your ass. All right? Trying to do something different here, even though I've done this series a couple different times over the years. It's a way to get back to you, you know? Give you a bunch of content here during the holiday season. Give you something to do. If it's your first time checking out any video on this channel or of this series, and you haven't done so yet, please smash that subscribe button. Follow the show on Twitter. Do yourself a favor, okay? Although some of you might want to do that, just so that way you could come back and rant and rave at me and unleash your flaming keyboard fingers of fire at me for today's video topic, um, which to me, they absolutely hold true, which I'm sure will get me lots of bitching, and that's cool. Like, that's okay. Sometimes the truth fucking hurts. And it does. It absolutely does. This is absolutely true. It is the six things that AEW needs to improve on in 2021. And they've got to. They just have to. Because they're in a position where, at a critical time in their history, where they need to determine whether they're just going to be a player or they want to make themselves truly big boys in the professional wrestling landscape. Like, that's where we're at. And if your goal is just to appeal to the same ever-dwindling hardcore fan base, eventually you will be losers for that strategy. Just so you know. You should always be looking to grow and improve and get better. Because if you're not growing, you're dying. That's just a simple fact of life. So it certainly holds true with professional wrestling. So what are the six things that AEW must improve on in 2021? Well, number six... We're going to start 654321. Number six, stop worrying about WWE in any way. Like, just cut it out. And some of you are going to say, well, WWE will sometimes take a pot shot, or for some of these guys, it's not too egregious, it's not too bad. I don't fundamentally disagree with you at all. Also, realize that life isn't always fair. Sometimes it sucks. It should be okay to take pot shots. You know, God knows WCW, ECW used to take pot shots back in the day. God knows WWF used to take pot shots back in the day. <laughs> the Nacho Man, the Huckster, Scheme G. <laughs> but at least when wrestling used to take pot shots back in the day, they were good and entertaining. Now they're just nerdy, dopey, and dumb. And when I think about AEW, like I did a video on it a couple weeks ago when Tony Khan was tweeting out a comparison of Dynamite's ratings compared to NXT. Who cares? Talk about your ratings. That's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Pump up your product by even daring to mention the competitor's product in this play. In this case, they're winning, even when they seem to be losing. Let it go. For those of you that worked with that company in the past and had a bad experience or had some harsh feelings, okay, great. Put that energy, redirect it in everything into what you're doing with AEW. Make All Elite Wrestling the best that All Elite Wrestling could be. Stop worrying about WWE. Period. Just stop thinking about them. Stop letting them live rent-free in your damn head. Number five. This is a big one to me. Cut out the spot monkey bullshit. All of these matches where everybody's got to get the crap in, all this 50-50-ass match booking, all this crap with all these false finishes that builds no suspense or drama, expect, except to those that are the hardest of hardcore fans that have no real standards anyways because they just like watching gymnastics and karate and crash test tummy garbage. Get out of this spot monkey business. Get out of it. The business is about getting heat. It's not about how much you can pop somebody with your moveset in the middle of an effing match. Learn how to be personalities. Learn how to be characters. Learn how to tell stories. Learn how to get people emotionally invested in what you do in meaningful ways that last it could be continued to cultivate it, developed, and built upon. There's only so much you can do. You're going to get to the point where wrestling matches literally have to become death matches and people are going to have to die in the ring in order for the fans to pop. Like when you got guys sitting there standing around, like Jim Ross criticizing the stupid spot where everybody stands around in a circle, waits for the guy to go. He's absolutely right. 
And any of the wrestlers that think he's wrong, like, one, what the hell's wrong with you? Two, why are you such a bitch about taking any criticism whatsoever? And three, he's right! It looks like shit! Stop doing it! A few less spots, a little more acting. A few less high-impact spots, a little more selling. It'll go a long, long, long way, I promise you. And this company and the talent within the company has to, has to get better at it in 2021. Number four, limit the use of profanity. It's cool and all that TNT's giving you the rope to say shit. But I don't need to hear it several times on a show every single week. And for somebody like me, with a pretty big potty mouth, I must not be complaining about it from a standpoint of, I just don't want to hear your profanity or that offends me now. I don't care about that. Cuss all you want. I like guess what people do. Like, I hate when we talk about politicians and they can't cuss. Well, that's just unrealistic. But you do anything too much, it decreases the value of when you do it when it should mean something. Like, using words like that should not just be flippantly thrown out there just because you can say them. Something like that should be meant to emphasize just how personal an issue is, just how much this has crossed the line, just how serious this stuff has gotten, making people believe that it is real. When you hear three or four different wrestlers say it once if not multiple times on a weekly Dynamite episode, it loses all of its impact in its meaning and it just becomes another word to use. So limit the use of profanity. It's like a three, four, five-year-old that heard, hears their first cuss word and then it's everything in their life. Like, stop that. It's not. Learn how to do other things that matter. Cut back on the cussing just a little bit. Especially, again, if you're trying to grow and increase your audience. Right? There's nothing wrong with doing it when it's right, when it's appropriate. Every single week, multiple times a week, that's just lame. Number three, treat your women like they matter. Because you basically, right now with AEW, AEW, excuse me, you have a glorified Divas division. They might do more spots, take more bumps, but they don't matter. They never really feature anybody on a consistent basis. It always seems to be a revolving door. You know, you have no idea what's going on. You know, have no idea who's supposed to be a big deal or not. Some of the women they feature the most aren't even women that are technically their champion. Like, that That makes absolutely no sense. In general, though, you got to treat your women better. Times have changed. Some of the wrestling fans that you have want to see the women be taken seriously. And I promise you, in today's wrestling business, when the WWE is doing a better job of treating their women a certain way than you are, you got issues and you got problems. And this is not acceptable, and it is something that AEW absolutely, positively must fix, and fix it now. Not even tomorrow, not six months from now, frankly, yesterday. I like, imagine... You have access, in theory, to every single woman in professional wrestling that's not signed to a WWE contract. And and this, this is the abortion of a women's division you get from AEW on Dynamite each week. Like, that's pathetic. Every single person involved with that company that has been a part of putting out this garbage-ass women's division should be ashamed of themselves. Right? Am I wrong here? Treat your women better. That's all I'm saying. Number two, you got to do a better job of telling the story. And that, that that's a couple different things. Number one, like this was especially a problem early on with the company, was they would sit there and go into these things and not explain who the hell this is, why the hell this match happened, why the hell we should care about this. And then you would have these dumbass fans would come on social media and say, well, that was on Being the Elite, or that was on their YouTube channel, or that was on their social media. Hey, ding-dong, dumb dicks. You got almost a million viewers watching your television. I promise you, if you're referencing a Being the Elite episode that maybe a hundred to 200,000 people maybe watched, the vast majority of your audience, you stupid idiots, is not going to be an understanding of what the hell happened on Being the Elite. So either show what happened up being the elite or reference it or explain it or stop being freaking lazy about it. 
Your defenses and justifications and excuses for this sloppiness and laziness are just totally out of hand. Do a better job of telling the story of who these people are, why we should care about them, what they've done, what they're about. Too often you just see random people appear and it's like, okay, you're supposed to care about them. Why? You're supposed to care about this how? I'm supposed to know about this heat from 20 years ago. How exactly? Like, you don't get explanations for hardly any of that crap. And also doing a better job of telling the story just in terms of, I think of like the Bucks of Suck as a perfect example. They sat there and started that heel turn where they started super kicking Tony Schiavone and Alex Marvez and everybody else. And you're like, okay, they're actually going to try and be characters here. But now that they're the tag champs, now you've got a young tag team coming out after them like they're the heels, but the young bucks are faces like it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like be more clear and consistent in the story that you're trying to tell and the message that you're trying to get across. And you're not doing it right now. They say the same thing about Cody Rhodes. Like, he has some founderish tendencies in terms of his entrance and the whole Nightmare Collective and how they present him. Like, yeah, it's a little founderish. It is. Are you supposed to like this guy? Because if anything, you know, just like real life, Cody, uh, you just get more and more reasons why you should be annoyed by this prick and realize just how much of a raging ego egomaniac he is. But you never know from one week to the next what the hell you're supposed to think about these guys. AEW's got to do a better job of telling their story in a variety of different ways. And I even think about it, like, look at the whole thing they're doing with Don Callis and Kenny Omega. Like, that should be some of the coolest crap that this company's done to date. It absolutely should be. It should have wrestling buzzing right now. Except it doesn't. They put the belt on a guy... And they're doing lame-ass crap with him. They've had him appear on Impact, but you don't really see the point. There's nobody from Impact coming over to AEW. You don't have other people going. Like, it's just get better at telling the damn story. Figure out what the hell you want to get across and get it across. And make sure in the process you're helping the fans understand what the hell you're trying to accomplish. They shouldn't have to go do the research themselves and figure it out. And no, that's not fans being lazy. That's a wrestling company being lazy. Let's place the blame in the appropriate place. But number one, most importantly of all, the thing that AEW must improve on in 2021, and they must improve on this, the roster is too damn big, they got too many people, and they're trying to focus and feature too many people. Pick your battles. Pick your people. You are not in a position where you could just put the Midas touch on everybody that you throw on camera and they become stars. And you could really argue that nobody that you have right now is really a big star. As a result, you absolutely positively in the formative early stages, early years of your brand should be focusing on making stars. Pick those six to eight people between your male singles wrestlers, your lady singles wrestlers, your tag teams, and throw everything at them. I shouldn't have to sit there and you're talking about your world champion, Kenny Omega, you know, is barely getting mentioned throughout the entire show when he's the fucking world champion and the guy that just faced him in Moxley that just lost the title, that was a long reigning champion, I don't think we've heard from since he lost the title. And there's no excuse for that. Okay, he's getting ready to do a New Japan show. Record something. Do something. Like every week, you feel like you're seeing a bunch of big, large, grand-esque tag matches because New Japan style, they're trying to get everybody on the freaking show, and that don't work here in America. Maybe it works in Japan, but it doesn't work here. And I thought that was a big problem with last week's show. That's why they had a 20% drop in viewership, because there's nothing to tune into. Like, they're always trying to feature different people. You can never really get behind anybody. Nobody ever really gets any character momentum on television. you got to pick and choose who you want to get behind and get behind them. Stop trying to feature everybody. It's not good for anybody. It's that simple. So to me, those are the six things. And you can put in other things. But those are the six biggest things AEW must improve on in 2021. And I can't wait to hear you guys... Call me all types of names for saying it and everything else. But anyways, hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Uh, 
stay tuned. We got five more editions. They're coming up. So, yeah. Subscribe or die, damn it. Click the bell. What the hell? All right. I'm just like, this is OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. I'm out.